How's it going, everyone? Scott McKay here, Airbrush Down Dirty Tricks Thursday night. Let's see who we got in here. I saw you guys jumping in. Awesome. Thanks for coming in early. Let's see what we got here. We got a couple people on Facebook, and we got Carl. We have Honey, nameless subscriber. Aaron, what's going on, everyone? Hope the sound's good. Aussie Pete, hope the video's good. Hope the audio's good. I spent today doing some adjustings and adjusting the mics, and me and Kaylee did a little bit of EQ adjusting, which I know nothing about, but she knows a little bit, enough to be dangerous, so let me know how it sounds. Uh, I was able to shut the AC off because we're not 90 degrees today. Outside, we're actually about, in, I think we're in the mid-70s right now, so, nice. so it's all good. It's uh, nice and cool. Nice and cool, exactly. So let's see, let's see, everything's good? He's good. And all right. Cool. Who are the other two? What do you mean other two? Oh, look, Facebook is glitching. So, Kaylee, if Facebook keeps glitching, go into the live stream and change the camera and the the, just the camera to the C22. C22. If it if it starts doing that and it might get better. If it doesn't, then Facebook goes bye bye, which I'm sorry to say. Oh Jose, yeah, 100 degrees in Cali, yeah, I saw that. Yep. Oh jeez. London pens here. Audio's not in sync, huh? That's weird because it was in sync before. So maybe huh. that's weird because it, maybe the delay. Yeah, maybe yeah. the delay on YouTube could be causing an issue. That's weird. Let me. I can check. Yeah, no worries. Is it really off or is it just like a frame or so off? Because uh, I changed things up and it was working great prior, but maybe when I went live it tweaked. So I might have to play around with that. Um, but it's going to be what it's going to be tonight. <laughs> so, all right. Let's switch to the view we're going to be using. And Kaylee, I'm going to have you pull up in Media 2 the large image. There we go. So, this is live, and the one down below here is the sketch. So, this is what we're doing tonight. This is a kind of a classic, you know, flying eyeball. It's been around forever. So many artists have done it, uh, from Coop to Von Dutch to Von Everyone, <laughs> pretty much. So, uh, this was a version I did quite a few years ago uh, me and Rhino did this in one of our airbrush rendezvous classes and it was uh, it went over really well we did like an ornate uh, um, engraved style filigree frame around it and this kind of came out of it it was a really cool piece and up until about five o'clock I wasn't sure what I was doing today uh, a few things went through my head and then this one came up so I decided we will go from here so this is one of my drawings. This isn't like a clip art piece, uh, but feel free. I didn't make a vector of this. This is going to be a hand drawn piece and hand done piece. I'm, I might make a vector available to it down the road. It's just not one I designed today uh, for it, but maybe I'll put it up uh, after the fact because I'm recording this and I'll probably edit this down to a how to later on. That's not as live feedy. Uh, hello, Gary. So. The first thing I want to do in this lesson, I already pre-recorded this part, but I'm going to kind of talk about it here. Oh, record. But, but I, pre I already recorded. But I pre-recorded how I transfer this image to the board. So if you look at the board itself, and we'll go into this camera angle, so you can see all the line work here already. The line work's already here. So what I did is I used um, a 7B pencil, and I just went on the back of the paper. And then I took a paper towel and I just kind of, you know, smoothed it out so it wasn't so chunky in carbon. Because if you do that, like you touch it and it just leaves marks all over your stuff. But So I just did it and kind of burnished it in and basically made carbon transfer paper but using graphite. Uh, you can use Sorel paper and things like that. But I'm going to actually hand cut this. So there's two ways to do this. You could sheet this with transfer tape, you know, and then transfer the image on the transfer tape and cut it. But as you do it, you will lose the line work because it's on the transfer. So what I did this time was I put the pencil line on, same as if you drew it on the metal panel. So this is a really 
great technique for those who want to hand draw everything on the on the actual panel, gas tank, hood of a car, canvas, whatever you want to do. Draw it with pencil. And there's two ways to do it. I'm going to use actually a, a, a mask, but even vinyl transfer tape, if you put vinyl transfer tape on it, you can see your pencil lines right through it. And then cut. And as you peel, all your line work is still there. It's a really cool way to work. Um, but what I'm going to do, because it's a little bit more transparent, is I'm going to use the FBS gold mask. Okay. So the gold mask, they actually, if you don't have the rolls of it, they actually make them in sheets for those of you who don't know. If you guys have a Cricut cutter or a Cameo, these are 9 by 12. These are sized perfectly for a Cameo cutter. So you can stick these right in the backer and just cut this size material. They make these in the blue, the gold, and the green. Um, so what I did before I did the transfer, so I did the pencil, played this over, and I took a pen, and just just like carbon trace, went over the whole thing and transferred the image. So my image is now on the board. Okay. Then, now, like I said, if you don't have this material, don't worry. Regular R tape, you know, vinyl, vinyl transfer tape works just fine because you can see through it. I'm not sure if you can really see it on camera, but but if you look really close, you can actually see the lines through enough to cut it. Now, vinyl transfer tape is actually a little thicker than this, but so I'm choosing to use this because this cuts super easy and it's repositionable. So, I'm used to handling this stuff, so I'm just going to stick it right on. And if you look, you can see your line work right through it and so it's cool because as you cut as I do all my cuts I'm not gonna lose and peel something out I'm not gonna lose it where if I drew on top of this as I pulled away I'd lose my line work um, the one thing an artist will always look for in the studio is an exacto knife I had it. I've used it all day, and now it's time to paint. I don't have it. <laughs> it's got a red wrap around it. Right, okay, let's move it. Silver exacto blade. Red wrap. Oh, got it. Totally where it wasn't supposed to be. I can't believe the audio's off. It, that stinks. It, yeah. It's really hard. Yeah, to it's tell. off in the camera, but it wasn't off on the audio. Like when we like when we tested it, it was perfect. We were watching ourselves. It was right. I am gonna take two seconds and I am gonna fix this. So now there should be audio, and maybe that's on track. Check one, two, let's see. All right, no, 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 no. How's the audio now? Is it back in track or is it still off? Let me know if it's still off. I'll see what they say. This is giving me fits, girl. Yeah, I just moved the source around. Yeah, the sound should be fine, but it was just the timing was off. So like when I snapped my fingers, it was like a delay. Oh, something. Time to get a 
a sound engineer friend in here. All right, so let's switch back to this kind of multi view. You can see what's happening. And I think on this camera, I'm going to zoom you in so you're super close. And you can see the line work. Here we go. What does it matter if you're half a frame off? Exactly. So when I'm talking to the camera, then it matters. When I'm off, it doesn't really matter too much. But um, for post editing later, it'll be easier if it's in time. Um, oh, time's good. Thanks, Gary. Oh, mess it. Okay, so. This part now, it's just it's just transferring on. My line work is underneath. And I'm going to start real simple. I'm going to cut the silhouette of everything. I'm going to pull the background. I'm going to work the background in like a black kind of texture, drop shadow. I'm going to work from background to foreground. And I'm going to do black. And then here, I'm going to do this guy all in purple tones. Um, the sketch was originally done in blue. And I think when we painted it, I think we did blue tones as well. The students could do whatever they want. But, uh... For this one, it's just going to be whatever you want. So I'm going to do purple tones. This is kind of reminiscent of what I used to do at some of the shows. And just, you know, when I did like the World of Wheels and the, the shows like the Expo Centers, I would just paint a single color. That way, as I'm painting, it's easy for customers and passerbys to see what's happening. Um, it's not... Like I'm trying to rely on a whole ton of, of different colors and different masking levels. So anyone, if you're doing shows, and unfortunately the shows around here are pretty much dead since COVID and construction. Um, it's the KISS method. You know what the KISS method is? Well, the KISS philosophy. Okay, you know what the KISS philosophy stands for? No. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> when you're at shows and you got people walking around and you want to attract them, keep your work as simple as you can. Because if it's too complicated, people won't stop and watch. They will just kind of be like, oh, that's cool, and walk by. Or they can't tell what's going on because you're relying on too much, you know, nuanced work that someone will have to watch for a long time. To understand what's happening but if you keep it simple with simple color tones and you know they can watch it come together as it's happening within a few minutes they'll stay for 15 20 minutes and watch um, but if you like have this complicated vector mass and all these designs and stuff and trust me I've done it and people walk by I'm like oh well, that's cool I know what's going on and they'll just walk away so keep it simple, stupid. Now, when I go to plot this, if I made a plot file, and we've talked about plot files a lot, and I like doing things by hand and by plot, you get the best of both when you understand how to do both methods. Um, but wherever I'm cutting this is how I'll go into Adobe Illustrator and that's where I'll put all the vector cuts. I'll put them in the same exact spot as I'm cutting this blade with this blade. And what that does, that keeps my work consistent, whether I'm doing work with a plotter or I'm doing it by hand. My process of painting doesn't change, really. You know, how I deliver it to the surface doesn't really change other than am I cutting directly on the car or am I plotting. So here's the real difference. So I don't like cutting directly on the surface of a car anymore because I understand I use a plotter. Because every time I'm making one of these cuts, I don't care how good I am with a blade, I am cutting into the substrate. I am cutting into the base coat of the car ever so slightly. And those cuts can, if, you, if you're not really soft with a blade, they can come back and bite you in the butt much later on because if you are too heavy handed with a blade, you will cut through the base coat into the primer, and if you're really heavy, you will cut all the way down to the uh, the bare metal. And if you do that, 
you could be having problems months down the road or even years down the road where that cut could swell and expand when the car sits out in the hot sun and that clear coat could shrink into it or could actually split from it. So this is why I started integrating the plotter. Um, you know, initially was two reasons. A, it avoids me cutting on the car. Because if you notice, I'm doing one cut. If I do one cut and go, oh, I didn't do it right, and I cut again, the when you have one cut, the paint a left and right of it fills in left and right of it. You don't see the cut line. But if you do it twice, if I cut once and then again, I guarantee you I'm going to see that cut even after clear coat. So it's very important when you do cutting technique style, make sure your cuts are singular and clean. Okay. Um, even when I did the inking, so when I took this and I used the pen, I used the pen in one stroke, and that lined up here, that's where I'm cutting. Now, by doing it that way, just like when I've done my plotting in the past, I can cut this paper stencil on these same pen lines, and the pen line cuts will line up with this one perfectly. Okay? Hey, Chris, thank you very much for that bid. A nice way to kick it off. Thank you. And uh, get this thing rolling. But that's kind of been my philosophy on um, using a plotter. And there are some guys out there that, oh, a plotter is cheating, blah, 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 blah. And I hate that mentality. Um, I will say this. They are right to a point. Plotter is cheating if you are so reliant on it, you have no other way other than to use it. So basically, you buy it, you use prearranged clip art only. The way it is, you never size it, you never change it, you never alter it. I don't still think that's cheating, but it's shortcutting and it doesn't, you know, it, you know, it's, it's fine for production, but it's, it's not going to be like, you know, custom art. But when you're using it the way, at least the way I think of it, the way I'm using it, I'm using it to enhance the process. I'm using it to make it more efficient. I'm making it. I'm making it to um, efficiency, cleanliness, quality. Of the paint job stays better because you're not cutting the substrate. And as all you guys know, unless you're doing the center of a hood, yeah, you're doing one image. But nine times out of ten, when you're doing a car or a motorcycle, especially, you're doing left and right side. So you're gonna do everything twice. So if you're hand cutting it, you gotta hand cut everything twice. This one, if I had this plottable. Once I'm done, I just go click and mirror, and it just inverts the image and hit plot. Now I got both sides of the car, and it's done. Option be benefit number two is say you size something, and you stuck this on the car, and you started painting it, and you're like, oh, we're going to love it. Well, the customer comes in and says, that's not where I wanted it. I wanted it bigger. Oh, well, shit. Well, if you hand cut it on the car, you're done. You have to strip it, sand it, probably reprime it, rebase coat it, blah, blah, blah. If it's plotted out and you've just pulled mask and sprayed, then if the car was cleared or the bike was cleared, if you didn't like it, you could pull all the masking off. And I've done this, trust me. Uh -huh. And you could actually wet sand or even take a little reducer and wipe the artwork clean off and then resize it, stick a new mask on and start over. So there's a lot of benefits to using it uh, for production. So just things to keep in mind. This way I'm doing it by hand, but you can see the difference of if I did it by plot, the method wouldn't change at all. Oh, da, 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 da. Okay, so now I'm going to go in, I'm going to check all my cuts, so I do them, do them, get everything. And because I'm on a light colored surface, I'm going to work background to foreground. And I'm going to pull this off. And that didn't take long. How long did that take? 20 minutes with all my yammering and talking about microphones and crap. Let's see who we got on 
Facebook. I've been checked in. We got Brian. What's going on? Roland. Jose. James Ray. Sounds perfect. Jeff, thank you. Uh, Kevin McCauley. How you doing, Kevin? Good to hear you. I'll see you there. Give Esther my love. Jeff Cronin. How you doing, buddy? Uh, George is a Marcus. How you doing? Some high school friends, grade school friends, Derek Coleman, Christine McKay, my cousin, how you doing? Give Roger my love, hope he's doing well. Good, good, good on Faith on YouTube. We got Michelle, hi Michelle, we got Carl, we got Jeff, how's it going Jeff? Will this be monochromatic? Yeah, kind of. So I'm gonna do it in black. I'm gonna do the background in black and I'm gonna do most of the artwork in purple tones. And um, just kind of make it a cool piece and fun. And so it'll be kind of tone on tone, basically. But so like at this point, this method from here on out would be no different if I used a plot file or this method. It's the same exact thing. And that's why I would say, oh, plotting is cheating. Dude, all I did different was I put my cuts with a computer instead of by hand on the substrate. And that's the only difference. And most guys who say it is cheating only say that because they don't know how to use a damn computer. Because if they knew how to use a computer well, they'd see the efficiency of it and use it when it made sense and not use it when they want to be traditional. I like to know both ways or as many ways to attack a problem as possible. Just makes you a more efficient painter and better in business. Because sometimes using the plotter is slower. Spending the time to be in the computer when you don't need to. Like if I'm just doing one of these, if I was doing this just for a customer, it's faster just to draw this and do it by hand directly on the surface of the cards that are going to the computer. That's if I'm only doing one. And that's kind of the point. Who's painting a boat? Michelle, you painting a boat? Is that who's painting a boat? Boats are fun. <laughs> they can be fun, but... They can also be an absolute nightmare. Cool, cool, cool. So I got my silhouette off. Uh, background, background, background. Let's do, we can do a Gerald Mendez. Or let's see, where's my, I love my glue template swirls for something like this, yeah? If I, do I have them? There we go. Ta-da. Glue template swirl. You know, we could, if you wanted to make it really cool, you could put some, you could put skulls in the background with a pack of skulls. You can do all sorts of stuff from here on. It doesn't matter. Do what you want to do. Um, this, I'm going to keep it somewhat simple. I know we're all coming to a long weekend here. And as far as brushes, what I'm going to do today, I'm just using my HPC Pluses, which is the Eclipse HPC Plus. I don't, I'm not doing micro detail. I don't need a micron. And you don't need a micron for probably 80, 90% of the stuff you paint. A clip by itself is enough. The Eclipse Plus gives you a little extra detail because it's it's got the screw-in nozzle, which is a little bit more centered uh, than a floating fluid nozzle, but it's really relative. So, you know, you don't need to go spend the $700 on a brush, especially when you're starting out. Buy two or three Eclipses, man. Or an Eclipse Plus and a couple Eclipses to start out. You're going to get way more bang for your buck. Um, that is the way I see it. And just... You know, a lot of guys... The, the Microns are overkill for half the stuff people are painting. You spend more time fighting the paint mixtures than you will creating. Now, like, technically, I don't know who the first person to do the flying eyeball was. 
I know some people have said it was Von Dutch. I know some people said it was um, some other guys and, you know, Coop and other painters. It was probably a mix of a whole bunch of different people doing it. Um, it's just like the first flame job, you know, on a bike. I've heard dozens of different people. They were the first and they were the first and the first. But this one, you yeah. I'm sure everyone's got their own version. That's kind of like the Elvis motorcycle. I've heard, I've been painting motorcycles for a long time, and I've probably heard at least 30 people tell me the story about the person they knew that found the bike in a barn, found it from someone, got it from someone else, and when they looked under the gas cap or the seat or the whatever it was said, you know, something to Elvis, blah, 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 blah. I've heard that story told 50 different ways. So, just like the first flame job and the first eyeball, I'm sure it's like that in, in some respects. So this is just straight illustration black. So I'm keeping this one simple tonight. This feed will probably be pretty, sh not short, short, but probably won't go the full two hours. Um, but this will be a nice project for people to work with and, and copy from. And like I said, you know, if you want, just, yeah, we'll do this. Take a screenshot. Oops. Hold on. See on your computer, or you can just... Take a screenshot of that. Three, two, one. And then try your hand at it. Do it by hand. Draw it. Or draw your own version of it, man. That's kind of the whole point of these. I don't want you guys, you know, basically trying to copy this thing verbatim the whole time. I'd rather you, like, learn from it and, and create your own thing. Yeah, man, HPC is awesome, man. They're a great brush. The HPC Plus is just killer, you know, because you got the regular Eclipse, the HPC S. Yes, I got my white in because it's thicker, because that's a .35. The HPC Plus is really a .3, so it's a little finer. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how I do it. And then, then you can go up to the HPC H and the Micron .23 and the .18. So now the cool thing is I can do a heavy drop shadow under this guy now and really punch this out and when I do this and I unmask it's going to have a really good lift. I'm going to apologize to Jeff because I was this close Jeff, this close to doing the um, Pegasus but I still need to work the vector a little more. Because that one, I, there's no way I'd be able to do it in a two-hour feed by, by hand. There's just too much going on. So that's going to come at a later time. Maybe next week or the week after. But it's on the list. It's on the very, very short list. Now I'm going to make this tail drop shadow off. So it gives it more lift. And this one's got kind of the devil's tail to it. But see what I did? I came the drop shadow was tight, and then I came away from it, and that creates more lift. So the light source is kind of out here, floating down, and it's going to create a nice amount of lift here. Same thing here. I'm going to put that wing drop shadow down here. And this is just illustration black. Uh, I put maybe 10%, 40, 50 in it to make it a little bit more sticky for the metal panel, uh, which does relinquish some of the erasability of it. But there's always a trade off in paint. There's a trade off in everything. And I might miss a little bit of the purple that I'm using in the main body on this, just to give it tone on tone. 
You know, I'd love to do more full color pieces. Um, but, just, you know, the goal of these live feeds is to really get to a completed painting or close to it within two hours. And if I go too crazy on color, if I don't limit the palette, there's just no way to get it done. So I'm going to save those full color how-tos for more of the pre-recorded instructional where I can, like, record and edit and speed up and, you know, do some, do some, uh, you know, just editing so for time. So you take a six-hour painting and get it down to an hour-and-a-half video. So best size needed for automotive, 3.5 or 5. So I like the 3.5 for majority of my work, for detail to, like, broad work. Uh, the 5... If you're using thicker paint, you can use a 5. Like, if you're painting a bigger vehicle, I would go with a 5. But for the most part, I would not go to a 5. Um, I use a 5 with my gr my siphon feed brushes, uh, the eclipses with the bottom. And that's usually when I'm doing murals and things like that. So if I'm doing a big truck, I'll probably go with 5. But for the most part, it's 3, 5 or under. Well, my mom is on Facebook. Just saw her. Welcome home, Mom. Glad you're back home. We have a bid on Facebook. So there's a bid on there's a bid on 150 already on YouTube. Oh my god! They, that, oh, honey's just kind of. He just came in. Yep. I don't know whose was first. So. Uh, there was a 150 way earlier. It was. Yeah. There was 125 earlier. Oh! Oh, was it 125 earlier? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not keeping. Kaylee's job is to keep track. Oh, I missed a spot. There's a little gap between the wings and this tail. A little I triangle. Don't, I don't know who's coming first. Is it? Well, we can go back and watch them later. So I don't know who did the first 150 bid. We can look through the comments and figure out. But if the bid goes higher than that, it's not going to matter anyway. So see, this is what I mean. So remember I was talking earlier, if you're doing a show, I would probably not paint this at a show live this way because everyone would walk by like what the hell is that mess and they'd keep walking i would do this all freehand the whole time that's how i would i would pursue it if i was live and in person um if you, know, you guys are here you're most likely going to watch the whole feed um but if you're at a trade show doing this you know People at this stage, until you start unmasking them free in, they would just walk by. They're like, oh, that's a mess. I don't know what the hell that is. So that's just a good tip for anyone that's doing live performance. Keep it simple. So this is like, you know, purple over the black, so it's going to be really, really dark. Uh, are, you, are you asking about spraying clear or paint? Oh, Chris's bill is 125. Oh, okay. Who's 150? And Honey Rivera. Same person. Oh, okay. Honey. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Kaylee's just figuring this out. Honey on I thought they were Facebook. <laughs> this is Honey Rivera. And Blue by You is okay, honey. Okay, so on. I don't have to worry about <laughs> Yeah, point three, most illustration paint, point three five is perfect. And when, then when you start over-reducing and make it thinner, you, then you can get down to the point, the point two three is point one eight. But straight out of the bottle, point three five is perfect, point three zero. Um... So, like, when I used to work doing t-shirts in the malls, we were using Eclipses or even Pache VL3s, which is really like a 0.5 millimeter um, nozzle. So, and we weren't reducing anything. That We were using Createx and Aquaflow and DECA way before all that. Uh, that's showing my age. DECA doesn't even exist in that respect, I don't think, anymore. Uh, that was just, you pour it in the, in the bottle and go. You know, no reducer, no water, unless you needed it. 
I think we used to have to reduce like the hot pink and some of the like the white a little bit, but for the most part it was just straight. All right. Yeah, the cup size, it depends. So like when I'm doing a car with real fire, you know, I'll definitely go with this airbrush and use the taller cup. These are the custom series versus the shorter cup. Okay, it's just going to be that much, you know, less time I need to fill it, which is where these really came about, which was the customs, which I wish they'd bring more of these back, um, especially for murals. All right, so just like I've always done, work background to foreground, things like that. So... The furthest thing back right here is this tail. So I'm gonna pull this tail off. And for the most part, I'm gonna pull a lot of this stuff really quick and just shade the layer, and then come back and freehand a lot of it, okay? Because what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow me to lose that hard edge masking look. And so, like I'm gonna pull this, but if I pull too far, I'm gonna pull into the main body but you don't need to, because then that's going to be over the wing. Oh, there's a little piece in here, too. Hi, William. Welcome. Yeah, we got 54 people in here tonight. It's awesome. I mean, I know there's a big speech or something on regular TV if people want to go watch, but I think this is more fun. Okay, so there's that. Now I can pull this lower wing. There's all sorts of levels in these wings. You can just pull the whole thing as a big silhouette. If you cut some of these wings back, you could you could pull just a little bit at a time and kind of shade as you go. Um, I'm just gonna really pull the whole thing and just use a loose template to do any of the wing separations. If you look, there's a bunch of lines here and stuff. And I'm gonna find that easier just to use my pocket graphics or use just like some of the art tool templates, the larger ones to go in like this and just find a curve. This is actually a piece of one of Lavallee's that I cut up off another one and just kind of made my own version of it. So see, I can just go in and start to delineate those wings a little bit. But I'm gonna do all the heavy stuff now and then what I'll do is I'll thin this paint out and make sure we're good to go for all the little line work. We'll do some erasing in these wings as well. Had a little chunk come off. I might not have strained this well enough. This purple I grabbed has been around for a little bit, so <laughs> this might be a little chunky. Hey, how's it going, Demetrius?
You know what I'm gonna do? Just to make for the sake of ease, I'm gonna do I'm gonna use my micron just for the fact of doing a really over-reduced version so I can shade faster. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna put reducer in first, which is always a key. And then we'll add the paint. And we'll see how that goes with some shading. This would be a good time for like a candy, using a candy purple as well. Yeah, so now, so this will be a thin paint. So after I do like the, the solid fill with the, the more unreduced purple, I can go in with this and do the little details like feathers and things like that. That's what this is for. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Just because I don't have another HPC Plus up here. If I did, I would just go with that. Oh, great. I'm, you know, Rogue, I'm glad that this helps and that's why I do this stuff. So just make sure you guys like and subscribe and don't forget about Super Chat. Super Chats help. They keep this flowing and the artwork flowing. And for those that start earlier, I'll see if I can show it here. So just so you guys can see, I'm going to loosen this up. And you can see, this is all the equipment I'm running to the left of me. All the cameras and all the equipment that's... <laughs> so I can do all this stuff on the fly. This is all to my right and switching each camera and input. That's some of the system just so you can, you can see it. So it's on my iPad where I can switch stuff around in different angles. Audios, that's each camera source. That's playing backgrounds and those are all the different pieces to the puzzle that make this feat happen. <laughs> then I can switch back. <laughs> the difference between the old style Micron and the new one is actually pretty easy. Sorry, let me get this in position first, sorry. So the Takumi, the, the brush is the same for the most part. And I've got them both here. So the difference between the two airbrushes. This is the regular Iwata SB. It's one been out for years. This is a Takumi. They are the same except for the Takumi comes with a new cup. So it's more, this is an aftermarket cup. This isn't the one that comes on a normal Eclipse. So they went with a more gravity feed cup that has multiple sizes. The head assembly is almost the same, but it's a little shorter. So if you look at the difference, so look at the main camera above here. Let me switch out to this one. This will make it easier. So see how much shorter from the look from the air stem? It's almost about a quarter inch shorter. So what that does, as you pivot, this gives you more control. So your movement here as a pivot reacts faster here than here. But other than that, they're the same, and they are really priced the same. This is just a newer generation of it. They were able to shorten the body and then do a new cup. comes with a newer trigger, slight differences the side. But mechanically-wise, the spray coming out of the nozzle is identical. It's just the newer version. You know, it's like when a model year car, it's the same basic car, but they change the headlights and a few other little things and cosmetics. That's kind of the difference at this point. Okay, so we got that. I'm gonna come here. I'll do some detail in here. We're definitely gonna bring some racing into this. I'm doing my best to keep up on both feeds. Yeah, so 
someone from Canada in Facebook. Who's from Canada on Facebook? Tony. Tony? Tony Where in Canada are you? I got some other family up in Canada, up in Nova Scotia, up in Grand River. That's Kevin McCauley and the crew up there. Where are you out of, Tony? <whistles> Kaylee will try to keep an eye on the comments as much as possible. I'll keep an extra good eye on Facebook because Dad can't see Facebook. Yeah, fa I don't know why. It's a, the way the phone app works. I think I need, I think I need another iPad. Because I need more stuff. I need more screens in front of me. So the needles are different. They're just sh the f from the needles really aren't different from here to here. They're just a little shorter, uh, but they're pretty much the same. Oh, you're in Philly, man. Yeah, shorter, but like the nozzle, the needle taper is all the same. Really, just works a little better because so if you think of a uh, from the fulcrum from where it pivots to here. The shorter the distance from here to the nozzle, the, the closer the response is to the pivot. So it's like a short throw shifter. Oh, if, um, if I move oh. a little bit, oh, British Columbia. Okay. Oh, you saw it. Yeah, I just saw it. Yeah, because you, well, you made me. Oh, it fades. Yeah. That's so weird. It shows up for a few seconds, then it fades, and you yep. can't go look back at it. I can, but I have to scroll like this. That's, it's stupid. That's stupid. It's, and if I turn to um, portrait and uh, landscape mode, it doesn't, I can't see any of the comments. It's just stupid. Max Thrasher, what's going on, man? Appreciate your comments earlier, brother. Thank you for that. All right, so we got that, that, that. Okay, this wing up here is further in the background. Someone from Brunswick. Brunswick, Brunswick. New Brunswick? Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. New Brunswick. Oh, new. I didn't even Thanks, Black Cat. Appreciate that. Yeah, I gotta go do another Canada class. I used to do, I did a couple up in Laval, Quebec. I'd love to go do another one with Patrick and the crew up there. That was a blast. We had a really good time. And then I know I've talked with, um, um man, I'm brain fogging right now. With Maple, Maple Art Supply, Ever Supply. Love to come up and do something with her and the crew up there. So things will things will happen. <laughs> awesome, appreciate that. Yeah, I wonder where my willow is. When she comes to up here, she just keeps walking around, and you'll hear tap 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 all over the floor because I got the the like the laminate floors up here, and you hear her. <laughs> Like I said, I'm just removing the mask and just making sure I get enough delineation so I can go back in and spray everything later. Um, I'm going to do the eyeball itself right now so you can see it. So I'm going to pull the pupil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the purple in there. And then I'm going back to my black. I want to make that really dark because it's the pupil. Thanks, Ty. Appreciate that. Yogurt Slinger! What's going on? Love having my Canadian friends and family in the house. <laughs> there goes the party. So anyone got any good plans for Labor Day weekend? I know Canadians, you don't do Labor Day weekend, but this is our long weekend coming up. So I'm going to be hard pressed to do any work tomorrow. But I got to, unfortunately. But I'll do a very light day tomorrow. So I'm just going to hit the iris and the pupil. And then we'll go in here. All my safe collections. Oh, that's horrible, man. Did they erase them or just block them? So I'm just going to put 
you know, some lines and stuff in the pupil. This is a great time to use like Drew Blair's method for the eyeball. Spray a little here. Let's do a little. Oh, where's the electric? Bring the electric eraser out. I haven't brought that out yet. We're gonna do a little bit of racing and just get a little. You don't have a liquor rate. Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> If you don't have an electric eraser, stick erasers work great. I like doing both. I'll do the initial cut with the electric. So we'll bring in some white highlights and stuff like that. But 40 years ago, Rick Griffin did the flying eyeball. They say, yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure if he was actually the first, but as others are saying, it's good enough for me. Get that nice pupil kind of reflection right there. Waiting on new blackhead airbrushes. Waiting on new airbrushes. Lost mine in the movie. Oh, that's horrible. Thirty something years in this business. I could probably afford to lose a few at this point. <laughs> so many of them. I got so many of them I don't even use anymore. Just different types and variations and. Alright, look at that. There we go. Oh, I got this thin light corn up. We'll do some feather work up here. And what I'll probably do at the end is I'll add a little black into this and do some final carved detail. Alright, good. So I think we can pull back. So I can pull back this. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to... Where is my... Oh, there it is. I'll sharpen these out. Yeah, so that's electric eraser. This is the Iwata one. Uh, which came out, I don't know, um, about a year and a half ago or so. But prior to that, I, we were using all different ones. Uh, Sakura makes a really nice one. Helix makes a nice one. There's quite a few on the market you can use. Or just stick erasers like this by Faber-Castell work perfect. So see what I did here? I'm, I'm going to soften all this erasing out. It's going to make that eye... Kind of glassy look. And the one thing I didn't do, I didn't put a lot of 4030 or 4050 in this purple, so it maintains the erasability. So when I when I cut this, I did a little bit of relief cut right here. Because that's kind of the like the eyebrow. It's kind of the Mike Wazowski. <laughs> I gave him a little something, something, so he's little, kind of got a scowl. I'm just gonna tap that before I pull the rest of this off. Now this is where you see that if you look really close, let's switch up here. Oh, I think I'm getting a little bit of double. There we go, it's a little off focus. I didn't notice until uh, I went to that camera view. Sorry guys. There we go. I want to be able to see the line work. So if you look really close, let me see if we zoom in, you can see it. Yeah, it's kind of hard, but you can I can still see all the pencil lead work from earlier. 
Forty fifty gives it actually tricks it into be more of a polyurethane than an acrylic, um, and it gives it makes it more it makes it much stickier and tackier. So it gives it more of an automotive feel for sure. So it's funny on my screen. I'm not sure. It looks kind of blue on my YouTube, but it's much more. Oh, it's only when I zoom in. Yeah, when you zoom in, it does that. I thought it was my Wi-Fi. All right, so that's fine there. Yeah, so in here, like, I'm going to put, I can shade the eyeball here, down the bottom, and kind of radius it and give it. What, what I like about doing the flying eyeball project, when me and Rhino did it, it, it solves a couple things. It's basically like doing the old school ball tutorial, like how to shade a ball, a sphere, to make it look round, but also have a cool project when it's done. Because it's basically the same premise. But I'm going to put some little veins, little freehand veins coming through here. mistake there see how I made that like a super sharp line no need to panic erasing just and it's gone do that nice and easy uh, da, da, da. hey James no no problem man uh, there's that I might have got the issue on YouTube fixed yeah yeah, sometimes uh, using like Microsoft Edge and some of the, and even, um, um, I forget what the old, before Edge was called. Um, yeah, it got glitchy, but the, uh, using Chrome should, should be good for you. Let's get a little pocket graphics going here. I'm gonna do a little just hard line shading like it's coming off the wing. And this one here is coming up. Okay. Chrome is better. Yeah, Google Chrome is better, especially when you're trying to do YouTube work and YouTube video streaming because Google is Google Chrome and YouTube is Google. They talk to each other much better, especially when you're trying to stream. Uh, oh, in their Explorer. Yep. So yeah, you should have a better time because your logins are all the same and they're all synced up together. So um, I definitely have better luck when I'm using Google Chrome. I use Google Chrome pretty much my main browser anyway, um, and I'm on a Mac for the most part. I'm on a PC for certain things, but you know, for the most part, I'm on a Mac. And Google Chrome just works the best. Like I hate Safari on uh, Apple, and I can't stand Microsoft Edge or in Next Explorer. So James, I hope that works out for you. If you get stuck again, give me a ring. Well, someone asked, uh, or Tony asked, did you finish the Predator? Like in the one from Prey that you did? Yes, yes, I have to clear it and I have to ship that out. But it is. Are you going to post a picture of it finished? I did, actually. Uh, I think it's the next day. It's in the next room, actually. 
I mean, I pretty much finished it that night. I didn't have to do too much more to it. I think I did a couple little just cleanup details, but it'd be hard to tell. And it had an exploder, yeah. It's like a Ford exploder. <laughs> So right now we do a current bid on this, uh, 150? Yeah. Yeah, 150 is where we're at. But guys, don't forget about those super chats and tips and things like that. That helps me tremendously. As you saw my setup and stuff, it's a lot of equipment to maintain and set up and, and do, so all that stuff helps. And just sharing it and telling people about the feeds and subscribing helps the algorithm. And if you if you're on YouTube, you sign for that time that bell. That'll let you know anytime we do a video and upload it, it'll it'll notify you. Again, that helps me as well. The feed should look super crisp and clean. It looks good on my side. <clears throat> Do you look at any reference pictures often or not really? It, Rogue, it depends what I'm working on. So, like, when I did Prey, I looked at multiple versions of the Predator, you know, the Prey Predator, um, to create my own version of it so it wasn't just like tracing a copy. Same thing with this, you know, I've done so many eyeballs over the years and this was just out of my head, but sometimes I'll look at different wings and different ideas to kind of help the process. Um, it just depends. Sometimes I just go completely blind and draw it from the hip with no looking at nothing. Some days I look at a few things just to get some bearings and some ideas. There's no, like, consistent one. Sometimes I do it like this. Sometimes I do it like that. It just depends on my mood. Sometimes I just don't have it to do it out of my head. Sometimes i got to look at stuff and get a, get a kick in the ass to actually get it, to get it going. Yeah, there's no, like I say this with air pressure, I say this with paint reduction, I say this with anything. There is no one single answer to doing everything. Okay, you, there's different approaches for different hand. I'm sometimes doing it hand drawn, I'm sometimes cutting it by hand. It, it, you know, sometimes using high pressure, sometimes you use a low pressure. You know, there are painters that paint a very specific way all the time. Photorealistic guys, uh, fine artists, and things like that usually have a mytho mythology, methodical way they do approach their pieces the same way every time, with little deviation from that. But they've been doing it for so long, they figured out that system. So I kind of have a system for certain images, I always do it a certain way. But each week on this, I'm usually doing something different. And so the one technique's not always going to work. And my goal with these is to show you guys different approaches and different ways to do things. Um, and maybe you'll mix them together from, like, oh, you might like the way I did the Prey one. Then you like the way I did this. Then you would like the way I did that. Yeah, I mean, Super Chats are great. Going to my store, my K-Fine Art, doing the demos and things like that are great. You know, and just, you know, subscribing and sharing is great because it shows different ways of um, support, things like that. And makes all these guys happy, too, the different brands. You know, like uh, Fisheye Filter, one of the big sponsors. You know, that's this guy here that keeps me dry. And on my compressor, we got Iwata Guns. This is Graytex. We use an FBS mask. This is my Visionaire system here. And this is all available through Coast. So these are, and these guys aren't paying me each week to do this stuff and, they may help me from time to time with some things, but I work with these brands because together it's just a great, um, great cohesive system where 
when I'm using a lot is with Kratex and FBS and everything just works together as a nice cohesive system. Uh, John, do you offer the vector files on your web page of all Almost all my live stuff. This one will be available. It's not available now. I didn't have time to get it up online. We'll get it fully vectored, but this will come. My goal is going to be is I'm going to edit this down later and do a shorter how-to, and the vector will be available. Uh, but mckayfineart.com. Kaylee can put that link up. She can drop that in the uh, Kier, the Kier 1. Oh. And uh, go from there. there. Yep, so McKayFinder.com, that's where everything is. And uh, we'll just go from there. And, oh, my disc just filled up. Oh, no. All right, so we won't be able to fully edit this down. We'll have to use a couple of the YouTube. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to get some bigger hard drives. Oops. Thanks, Rogue. Yeah, that's you know, my whole approach. It's just kind of, um, you know, I want to do different ways of doing it. And like I've been talking about for a while, I do have plans on doing some small workshops here live. Uh, some membership options for you guys to come online and we'll do small, in group, you know, small group classes or large group classes, depending on the subject matter. Um, it's all coming. I just need to, I need to come up with a, game plan for this winter uh, but that's all gonna happen the systems are in place I just need to get it all worked out so definitely um, <laughs> definitely keep an eye on stuff okay so I got that that let's do the main wing here the main wing I'm gonna take from the bottom yeah I left last week's live feed on this hard drive mm -hmm. thinking I had enough but it was like 700 gigs, mm. and I put it down to like 300, and I figured I'd make this feed too, but I didn't. Bigger hard drives required. So yeah, just so you guys can understand the data load that this takes, when last week's live feed it records all the cameras at once, it was almost a thousand gigabytes, almost a full terabyte for one episode of content. So, which is crazy. Hey, version with this. So, I am doing uh, a bourbon by Metallica called Blackened. That's what I'm pairing with tonight's painting. Just pull this whole darn wing off. Yeah, maybe I'll if the if I don't have enough content to do a nice full edit on this, then I will just uh, have to maybe do another one of these. But I think we'll be good. We got this nice camera view. Let's switch back to this view here, so you can see the completion of the wing. And now that shows you kind of the piece overall. I use. DuckDuckGo on the iPad. Harry, what are you talking about as far as that DuckDuckGo? I don't know what DuckDuckGo is for the iPad. It's, what are you talking about? This browser. Cheers to you guys as well. Thanks, Michael. Alright, so... So between pocket graphics and using a little bit of these, we'll delineate the wings. So we'll just go in here, a little loose template here. One of the classics, the old big shield. This thing's been around since probably before I started painting, which is uh, just so useful. This one template alone. Classics never die. Oh, didn't like that. Oh, yeah. We'll erase that out. 
erasing for wings is probably one of the funnest things to do because you can really get a lot of detail in a short amount of time. So like watch here, I'll go here, here like this, and just shade really quick. Come in with the eraser and you can just pull those lines right in. If you want, you could shade a little more. You could take a razor blade and You can cut little feathers in if you want. That's super easy. Or just make this really sharp and do it. But if you put a lot of 4050 in here, or use an automotive paint, like automotive urethanes, um, if you put it on too thick, you'll get a real scratchy look versus a very soft look. Oh, thanks, Calvin. Hey, you can go back and watch it. It'll be back up right after the live. It'll rebroadcast itself. But for those interested, this is up for bids. It's at 150 right now. Last I checked. Cool, Michael. We got a lot of panels to finish polishing that guys have been waiting for. Appreciate your patience. It's been a very busy season. I think London Penn has been waiting the longest for his octopus piece. That's still... It's cleared. I just haven't had a chance to do the final polish on it and get things boxed up. And It has been a way busier summer than I anticipated. We want to thank him for the patience. I'm going to keep a lot more white up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the erasing, and then I'll come in with some white highlights. And this is just illustration violet. Uh, I didn't mention this earlier. So all I've used right now is Illustration Black and Illustration Violet. It's a really cool piece. I'm going to tell you, I pulled this violet out of my back stock because my most current one I ran out of. This is probably about a three-year-old bottle of paint. You can accidentally ship the octopus to my house. Yeah, there's so many pieces I wanted to get to this summer too. I just couldn't get to it. There were so many bikes and some of the projects got just bigger than we thought they were gonna get. And like that Trans Am that we're working on, that was for me, that was ah my head, I'll get that done in two days. Yeah, that was a week. Probably like five, you know, it was like six days actually in that. because of some little cleanups and stuff that had to be done. Thank you, Paul. All right, let's get these wings a little more defined here. All right, so see how I just, I did the major shading and I darkened these areas. Okay, now I'm gonna come in here. You could do white if you wanna paint it, 
But I'm going to come in here with the eraser. And I'm just going to hit those wings. Hit the kind of center spline. Give it a little scratch. And give it that little feather feel. But see how that just popped that up? Yeah, I'll definitely get this up for Vector and make this, you know, fairly cheap download too, because it's only going to be a single. The Reaper download is probably the most expensive one lately, just because there's so many components to it, and a lot of you guys downloaded that, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys do with it and how people utilize it. No, I don't really have, I used to have a DVD which was Plotter Master which covered a lot, but I think through most of my videos if you go through there's a lot of beginner stuff and I'm going to be doing some airbrush basics and some one-on-one -on -one training, you know, airbrush one-on-one -on -one stuff and kind of crash course stuff in the near future from video, so definitely keep an eye on that. Um, and then when I do my workshop classes, I'm going to have some tiered system for beginner intermediate, so there'll be different levels of stuff you want to do so definitely keep an eye out for that and that'll be you know there'll be a subscription basis model and then a, a download individual download model I really got to sit there and come up with the content of how I want to do it so feel free to message me um, Dimitri's on like what things you'd like to see as a beginner like what are you having trouble with that helps me develop the you know the content so definitely uh, don't be afraid to like say hey can you do this or how about this or because I might not think it's important to because I'll overlook it but if something people need I'll be happy to do it Oh, honey, it's it's quite all right. I appreciate the support. You've probably done more super chats than anyone else, or you're right up there and more support. So always, that's why you're knowing your limits. Yeah, you got to know your limits. There's only so far you can go. Plus, don't worry, we got other stuff coming up. Uh, even a basic cleaning. Yeah, I, I did do a, I did a maintenance, a couple maintenance ones. If you go back through my videos, Rogue, there's some maintenance ones in there. Uh, a couple of them actually. And uh, homemade reducer. I don't recommend homemade reducer absolutely whatsoever. Do not use it. Use reducer formulated for the paint. Homemade reducers will bite you in the ass down the road. They just will. If you're doing like. Artwork hang on walls, not so much. If you're doing canvas art, you're probably fine with some of that stuff. But I'll tell you right now, you ain't saving much for the problems you could have, especially if you're doing work for clients automotive. Uh, paint, homemade reducers can break down the paint improperly. It might not last as long. It's not going to flow as well. It might not actually chemically react to paint. Because the way water-based paints especially work, they work on a pH drop. So if the water is too hard or too acidic or too based, the paint won't actually cure properly. It'll rubberize and skin over. And then other issues will happen that people complain about that I see all the time. So I do not recommend a home reducer. Use something that's made for the paint. Um, like I said, you're saving pennies for the potential risk of dollar failures. 
It's not worth it. I've been doing this since I was 15 for 30 something years. And the only homemade in a pinch I will recommend you do. You run out of reducer, you're on a job site, you can't get anything that'll work. Don't go use tap water. Go to CVS, go to a you know, grocery store, get some um, um, distilled water. Distilled water you can you can work with and get by if you need to in a pinch, but don't make it a rule. That's that's what I really have to say about that because I've seen just so many problems with it. I understand the chemi the, the chemistry behind the paint. It's just not something you want to do. Homemade cleaners, on the other hand, that's fine. I don't buy like airbrush cleaner and stuff uh, for water base for for urethane automotive. I just use straight lacquer thinner or acetone. For Createx and water base, I, I rinse my airbrush with, I'll show you. I use a squirt bottle of just straight water to flush out all the bulk paint. And then I have a 70% isopropyl alcohol mix. And sometimes I reduce that with a little water. That's for the final clean. And then I you know take it apart and go there. But that's it. So save the money on the cleaner, you know, make some cleaner that you can just use, but reduce, or spend the money on the right reducer. It's gonna be more value in the long run. I know it seems expensive, but all these homemade recipes I've seen guys do, by the time you're done buying all the stuff and mixing it, and you're not saving that much, and like I said, you are having a big risk of a problem. Yeah, Carl, it really doesn't. Like I said, it's penny savings, if best. But it's, it's dollars or tens of dollars of mistake potential. Think about it. If you use the wrong stuff on a motorcycle, and you paint the bike, and you use homemade reducer to save five bucks, realistically, maybe 20. And that paint job fails because the paint plasticizes improperly, plasticizes instead of drying and curing. And then the whole paint job has to be redone. <laughs> you didn't save nothing. So that's that's kind of my take on it. It's, like I said, I've done this for a long time and I've heard all the recipes and I've heard this and I've heard that. And yeah, so instead of buying one bottle of something, you'll go to three stores and get water and glycerin and this and that and this and play chemist. And I'm not saying you, just in general, I hear these guys online doing it. Just buy the right stuff and you'll have no problems. And if you do have a problem with the paint, you'll know it's the paint and not some concoction you're using. Like if you call Createx or whatever paint company you use and say, hey, I'm having a problem with the paint. And the first thing they say, oh, what are you using a reducer? <laughs> you're reducing with home. They're like, sorry, can't help you. But if you're using the right stuff and there's a problem, they'll help you. Is that Gerald? Is that Gerald? Mr. Mendez is in the house. How's it going, sir? Gerald shut up because he knew there was no green tonight. Damn, I'm going to have to put some green in here. No, no green tonight, Gerald. Good to see you, buddy. How you doing? Thanks for popping in. 9.30. All right, so yeah, I've been using this purple the whole time. What I'm going to do now is the same purple that's in the brush. I'm just going to take a little bit of black. Just drop that in there. I'm going to make this darker. And now that's, whoops. Oh no. No problem. I can black that out. All right, so basically now I'm darkening this purple so I can go in. for all the darker shadows and just kind of send this thing home. So basically what I did is I worked in that mid-tone. Could you do like an interactive Zoom class? I used to go to the library and check it out. Yeah, so John, that's the plan for the small group and individual classes to have a live Zoom class where, where you can see me and the canvas and if we're doing tech work, you can see the computer screen. 
And then on your side, I can either see you or depending how you paint the camera, I can see the work you're working on and work you through it. So that's coming. That's going to be part of a membership-based program uh, that I'm working on. So definitely subscribe and message me and keep in touch and we'll let you know when that all happens. Because that is going to be the plan is to pretty much do like one-on-one -on -one or like, you know, five or six people in a, in a Zoom class. Which I think will be really fun and really informative for everyone. I've reached out to a few people already to kind of help me with the beta version of it. So feel free to message me if you want to kind of work on that. And, and you know, there might be a little hiccups and growing pains, so that's kind of part of it. What about homemade reducer for textiles? It so realistically, it still can. Um, it can affect a lot of different things. You might get it better, but say you do a textiles for a customer, and if you don't reduce it right, then you go to heat set that shirt, and it doesn't heat set properly. And the first time they go to wash it, it fades out because you just don't know. It's again, you're not saving enough. Me personally, looking at the numbers, you're not saving enough to take that risk. I see guys doing the automotive. They'll use, they'll use this. They'll use that, and they'll say, "Oh, I'm just going to use cheap primer," you know, because I don't want to spend the money on PPG or house color primer, or I'm going to use PPG. I'm going to use house color colors, but I'm going to use the cheapest clear I can get my hands on because clear coats are so expensive right now. Well, that's fine, but if there's a problem, the paint companies can't help you because they don't know if that reacted funny with this stuff, which it can. Or it could just be not optimal. So, I don't know. I look at it, in the, I look at it big picture versus small. Um... You know, that whole penny wise, pound foolish. You might save a couple pennies in the short run, but uh, the long run, you really don't save much. Because one problem, one paint failure because of a bum mixture, that bum cocktail mixture, will lose you enough money to negate any savings you might have saved. Okay, so basically what I'm doing right now is I've added that black into the purple, and wherever the darkest purple is, I'm going in around and reshading those. Okay, I'm shading those, making them darker, punching those details out. It's like carving a sculpture. You get the big areas blocked out, and then you go to details. You don't do the details first. The details come last. Right, Gerald? Details, they come last. You can do some mid details, but you know, there's no sense spending 20 minutes doing a bunch of little stuff at the beginning when shirts are going to cover it and have to come back to it. Yeah, if you're doing it for a business like Carlson, it's, it's not worth, it's not worth the risk. Because if you're doing it as a business, if something fails and you used all the proper chemicals, all the right compatible material, you can go to the paint manufacturer and say, hey, help me fix it. Or in some cases, pay me to fix it. And that's happened, I've had it happen. There have been legit paint failures, it does happen. Rogue, loose to tight, exactly. Yeah, rendezvous on the west coast, Createx has a couple classes. Um, and I'm working on a few. Hopefully the Airbrush Art Circus will come back in the next year or so. Let's talk to Rob and see what's happening there. And I haven't even used white yet. I'm going to make this back wing a lot darker so it pushes back. And the inside of this wing darker. Now it's just adding a few drops. The magic is in the details. Exactly, man. 
Hey, Gerald, I, I don't know if, you, if you're, you're coming or you're planning on coming to SEMA, but I know I've been talking with them. I do have plans. I will be at SEMA this year. Uh, Gerald offers classes too. Yes, he does. Some amazing classes. Um, I'm going to be doing the Iwata booth at SEMA this year. And I'll be over at FBS as well, and which is convenient because they're right next to each other. So we're going to be doing some make and takes where you'll be coming over to paint side by side with me. Take a project home. Michelle did a few of them last year, one of those. And uh, me and Gerald were side by side last year. That was awesome. Not sure if that's happening again this year, Gerald, but if it does, I hope it does. Man, it'll be awesome. It's always great to work with Gerald. And I know this year, too, uh, Dennis Matheson is going to be in the area. He's coming to Vegas during SEMA for some other stuff, so he's going to be there. Great. So see how that's looking. See how that dark's just starting to really pull that together. Right now, the current high bid on this, I think, is two twenty. Two fifty. Oh, is it two fifty? I didn't hear that. Oh, oh no, two seventy five. Paul. Real. It went. It was like right after another. It was two twenty. Paul. Two fifty. Blue. Two seventy five. Paul. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, guys. Sorry, Kaylee, you didn't tell me. I thought I did. No, she didn't. Robin Shop. Hey, Robin, how you doing? Another amazing, talented artist and creative. Works on some amazing films and clothes and fabrics and textiles. Awesome. Thanks for popping in and checking out the feed. Terrence, how's it going, my friend? Terrence Phillips. He is another artist that's killing it. In custom bike and bagger world. Terrence is one of my biggest supporters as well. Alright, so we got that. We got the erasing done. At this point, like I said, you can just sit here and play for hours with different Feather work as much or as little as you want. It is 9.30. We're going to cut a little short tonight. We are going to a holiday weekend. Oh, yeah? We're going to a Labor Day weekend. Okay, so now we got some solid white here. Mike Benner's in the house. How's it going, my friend? A few people over on Facebook. I can't even say go over to YouTube now because I got the, the high quality feed running on both. Which that's nice to do. Okay, so the white, you can use this very sparingly. Let's put the bright white right there. Now, in this case, I'm not worried about blue shift because this is all done in cool tones anyway. I want to give a little reflection. Yeah, a little reflection across that eye. And I'm going to paint just the stencil here. Watch this really close. See that? that did just that little bit it makes it look like it's looking at horizon line reflecting in the pupil little things like that do a lot and now you can go in I can white highlight some of these and soften up some of that do some brush work if you want to do brush work whatever you want to do at this point you can do I'm going to give us a little texture to the eye up here. Let me 
just a thought, but if you come up with a Mylar sensor that dims the hot glue effect, I would buy it. Yeah, man, this, you know, I've done some, I've thought about doing these. I might even just do a tutorial on how I made these, too. Um, but yeah, I have started messing with some hard stencils, I think for Pocket Graphics 2, and some other ones I'm going to do this style, but, um, Gerald's has some that's similar, so I haven't really messed with them. See tomorrow, go get a haircut and then off the. Yeah, man, I need to get this mop cut. I was definitely gonna, and I didn't do it. <laughs> Thanks, honey. I appreciate it. Some last minute highlights, and we're gonna start winding this thing down. So if anyone wants to do any more bids, get them in now. Um, right now, I think we're at, what, 275, Kaylee? Yep. So this one's just using straight illustration white out of an eclipse. A dirty eclipse because this fluid nozzle is jammed up because I didn't check it well. I want to put a new, different one on there. Come off. Let's see here. A little adjustment. Nope. Yeah, this one's. This brush needs a bigger overhaul. That'll happen after this. So we need some ultrasonic time. Okay, man, have a good night. Thanks for popping in. Bro, thanks for popping in as well. Let's start counting this thing down and getting this thing done. And everyone can go have an amazing weekend and hope you guys can take some time with family and friends. Stay safe and happy. Let me get to a I'll zoom back in on this and you can see what's happening. And that's pretty much it. So final bid right now is 275. Anyone wants to get in right now, now is the time. If not, it is gonna go be going once. Three times. That'll be at 275 is final. Congratulations, Paul. For those following along, at this point, it is just details. It is what you want it. It's add those little details and pencil lines, extra shading. You can spend five more minutes on this or five hours if you want. Five hours might be a bit excessive, but you could. It all depends how real you want it and how much you want to pull into it. Follow, shoot me a message over on Facebook or Instagram or email me at scott at thinairgraphics.com. And uh, we will settle up on this. I'll give you a rough idea when this is going to take. I got a whole bunch to clear and polish and then send out. So uh, we'll go from there. But, my friends, that is going to be it for a Thursday Airbrush Down Dirty Tricks. I want to thank everyone on Facebook and on YouTube here for checking it out, commenting, hanging out, being cool. Make sure you share it. Tell all your friends. Sign up for notifications. And go on and download some projects and paint them. And when you paint those things, show them to me. Send me a message. If you need help, I'd love to see what you guys are doing with them, how you're utilizing them, and if I can help you in any way make them better and better. So have a great time. Thanks for popping in. I will see you all soon.